Welcome to Security Architecture Podcast, where we help cybersecurity professionals to stay ahead of the curve and ensure they are successful in their cybersecurity journey. Hi, I'm Evgeny. I'm Dimitri. We have here Rafik from Fortunate. Rafik, can you please tell us about yourself and the company? Thanks, guys. My name is uh, Raf Yunini, and I'm the Etsy director for Canada at Fortinet. Um, thanks for having us today. We're really pleased to be here. Uh, Fortinet is the leading cybersecurity company in the world. Um, we make intelligent hardware, intelligent software that helps secure companies of all sizes. Um, we are the largest cybersecurity employer in Canada. And we recently have developed a really exciting portfolio of edge test security services, including SASE and remote access, that I'm really happy to talk about today. Amazing. Raf, tell us uh, what's the name of the offering by Fortinet that others think the ZTNA remote access. So the, it's called 40 SASE. 40 SASE um, encompasses a broad uh, range of products in our portfolio, a broad range of our intelligence in the portfolio. Um, one of the things that we're most proud of is that our SASE is not just a smart remote access tool. Uh, our SASE is a really smart security tool. So it allows you to not only you know, do some intelligent traffic routing, some intelligent remote access, but it also allows you to do end-to-end -end security using the complete suite of our tools, including our artificial intelligence to uh, secure your network and secure the digital transformation that's uh, happening really swiftly in the world today. So Rafi, we hear a podcast about architecture. You mentioned routing, end-to-end -end encryption. Please tell us more about your architecture, how you guys do this, how many different locations you have in the world, how the traffic is routed, if it's in using your broadband, using the internet, how the high availability working. Sure, great. So today, today obviously, we, uh, we acquired a company called Opaque Networks, one of the leaders uh, in the SASE space. And um, we have, we have uh, many, many POPs around the world, mostly centered in Europe and uh, North America today. And we're building on Africa, Asia, uh, Australia regions uh, as we speak. And one of the great things about our SASE is that uh, it will work with the existing great Fortinet technology that we have today. So whether that's a client, whether that's a, um, a, a piece of hardware at the site, a small site, large site, a medium site, it'll all work together with our hardware. And high availability is going to work in, in a very slick way because, uh, because of the, uh, our ability to create really, really custom ASICs that do this well, we'll be able to connect to one site, multiple site, or potentially multiple POPs uh, at once to allow that great resiliency, that almost full mesh uh, in the network that's really hard to get with, with a pure play SASE uh, vendor. Rafi, do you wanna show maybe a diagram? Do you have a diagram that you can show how it's working? Sure, I'll just, go ahead. Yeah, meanwhile, you, you're bringing the diagram. Okay. Is this means that you mainly work with Fortinet products or if a customer has a different proxy, for example, they can still use Fortinet SASE? Uh, great question. So today, today it's Fortinet only, but we are we have a number of exciting things coming up front that will let us integrate with many of the uh, exciting players that are out there. So what I'll do is I'll just show you. Um, I'll bring something on screen here. Yeah. So this is this is kind of what we have uh, what we have today. So we're going to have the ability to bring you in from on network, off network, um, half half, public cloud, private cloud, and also SaaS, whether it's Dropbox or Salesforce or Office 365. And the beauty is we're not just gonna mesh this together. So we, we, we don't wanna be, and you know, if you, if you look at the explosion in Fortinet recently, we don't wanna just be the plumbing provider, okay? We don't wanna just be the plumber. In the center, what really binds us all together as the glue is the ability to scan this traffic intelligently through our entire suite of services, right? So, so the plumbing is an important piece in remote access, but as we've seen with all digital transformation happening, that's really been accelerated by COVID, um, this traffic needs to be secured. And that's where we think, um, you know, Gartner believes, everyone believes that we're gonna have a market lead solution because we'll be able to, you know, as the traffic traverses the cloud delivered SASE, as the, the, the appliances scan the traffic, we'll be able to strip out threats. We'll be able to, to strip out attacks. We'll be able to really help you defend against your adversaries in this entire nice mesh that SASE network that customers will eventually build out, right? Is this mean that if I don't have a Fortinet device right now, I will not able to connect to your cloud, or I can still use IPsec or GRE tunnels to do it? Right. 
So today, that today that's correct. Today it would be a Fortinet specific zoom, but that's changing um, as we speak. Okay. And if I have a Fortinet firewall or SD line solution in my site, can I do basically configure everything for high availability and it all will change by itself and no route by itself? Absolutely. So full mesh VPN, forward error correction in the VPN, uh, the ability to queue uh, voice, video uh, as you desire, the ability to inspect all the traffic for antivirus, uh, you know, application control the ability to prioritize certain applications, the self-healing nature of all that is all automation. It's all automatic. And Can you right? describe the traffic flow? So let's say I'm in Toronto and I want to go mm -hmm. to Australia. Mm -hmm. How the traffic will go from my home to Australia using the cloud delivered SASE network from Fortinet? Right, so it'll hit one of our pops, the closest pop, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and from that pop, it will traverse to the, your desired destination. Now. That being said, some of the SD-WAN features that are built in today that kind of overlap with the SASE, you could, in theory, go directly to the end node if you wanted to. But in the cloud-delivered model, you hit the pop, you go to your destination, and you, potentially inside the pop or as you're traversing the pop, you could scan all of that traffic for threats uh, and see if your adversary is trying to get into um, exfiltrate data. Do you use the fortunate backbone or you just use the internet? We have our own custom backbone that we've built out and we're building out for our cloud delivered SASE. Uh, it's all tier one network. It's all customized and it's all, it's all highly available. So I'm actually using your network, correct? That's right. And you're not leveraging any public cloud providers for scalability or anything like that? No, not at this point, no. I have another question about the architecture diagram. I can see there is an off-network route there when using SASE agent. Would they require to have uh, Fortinet equipment in order to access uh, Office 365, having just the SASE agent? I mean, you could, in theory, have the agent, and the agent will route you where you need to go. Next question of ours around the licensing of the product. How would you license it? Is it part of the more inclusive package of uh, solutions? Or I can just license this and ZTNA remote access uh, on its own? Exactly. So as, as you license it out, um, you'll tell us the number of agents you want to, you, you would like to have the number of SD-WAN endpoints you want to have. And based on that, you'll be able to consume as much as you want, right? So an agent license will let you consume what you want to consume. And uh, SD-WAN, let's, let's say you had a, a, a branch of a lot of people and you had a nice uh, Fortinet appliance there, will let you consume the services as well. So it'll depend on how many agents, how many SD-WAN endpoints you want. All those features will, 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 will determine what your licensing cost is. But once you license it, in typical Fortinet fashion, you'll be able to consume it. I see. So it's, so it's both how many agents, how many users I'm going to have, and also how many destinations I'm going to have. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. When I work from home or anybody else that's working from home, we cannot rely on rules based on IP. So we have to tie in one way or another to MFA and identity. Mm -hmm. Can you describe how is your solution working with different identity providers? A great question. Great question. So obviously, yeah. So the traditional ACLs or traditional network routing is dead. Not dead, but uh, deprecated probably in SAS. It doesn't make sense. Uh, not manageable. So, so we have integrated with obviously our own internal 2FA, uh, 2FA service and all of the major providers out there, right? So if you wanted to be able to authenticate using potentially corporate credentials and 2FA, or if you wanted to just integrate off as purely off a SAS provider, you'd be able to do either or or a combination of the two, right? So we're leaving it up to the customer, but we fully supported the full stack, uh, whether it's our own or whether it's all of the um, popular uh, public providers of MFA. So let's talk a little bit about what are the options to consume the service, right? I mean, many of today's modern requirements are to consume both the internet and also do our work through the browser. There are some offerings that using uh, agent, as we can see here, but also there is a uh, offerings that providing uh, agentless approach or client as approach. How would you support such a uh, solution? Yeah, so you, so great question. So you can do all of the above. Today we're focusing on the SD WAN piece and the agent piece, and in the future you'll see you'll see more agentless solutions coming out. Um, but today we're focusing on SD WAN agent piece to give you the full access to the SASE platform. You mentioned with the agent and with your network, you were able to route majority of the ports and protocols. Describe more about what protocols are supported. Can I do VoIP? Can I do password share, file share? Can I do patches when people work from home? Uh, all of the above, man. All of the above. I'm... 
we, we, we're taking a pretty broad approach to it in terms of the like, customers do we want to do. We have a number of customers request interesting Oracle type access through, through the SASE, you know, very, very customized homegrown applications. So, so we don't perceive any, um, any limits in the future as to what you'll be able to do. From perspective of reporting or user behavior, is what's available from Fortunate to help customers understand what's happening with the traffic and what kind of options are available to potentially block someone because they're doing something risky? Part one of that answer is, um, you know, we'll have the typical amazing reporting capabilities that we have in the existing product today is going to come to SASE. So you'll be able to drill down to say, you know, what, did, what, did, what has Evgeny done today? What applications, what websites, what, app, what protocols? What is, what is Evgeny's footprint today? What is he doing? Second piece of that is if we wanted to stop Evgeny from doing something per se, that's where the security stack comes in. So that's where we talk about the value that we add over what we think is traditional SASE where, or traditional just people that lay out the plumbing. So we actually overlay the full security stack. So if we wanted to block applications, if we wanted to block websites, if we wanted to block certain specific actions that you're doing, that's where the security as a service piece would come in. That's where we'd be able to actually block the actions or potentially block threats or potentially block adversaries inside the plumbing. We actually done with our official part of the questions and the show, and we want to position to a bit of an open discussion. Sure. And we have a few questions. Uh, maybe you have questions to us as well. I have a question on host checker. When I connect with the 40 agent from my laptop, would I be able to check if this laptop is part of my domain or it has an antivirus before I let it connect? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So as, as part of the ZTNA um, component, right, you'll be able to check all of the above, potentially, you know, log that um, and do all of those things, you know, prior to coming online if you so choose to, right? Because the Latina architecture will let you do all types of things um, from 2FA to posture checking to a, a certain enforcement of patches on a PC. So all of those features, uh, you know, all of, all, all of a combination of those are available to you as you come onto the platform. From your personal experience, can you tell us a, maybe a story of something interesting that happened when you're trying to integrate a solution and how you guys overcome the problem? Something unexpected. Oh, something unexpected. Yeah, well, that's a great, it's a great question. So um, we had a customer actually in Canada and due to various, you know, technical security um, policy requirements and industry requirements, they actually have uh, it's one company, but 12 separate active directories and 12 kind of separate companies within that company. So that's, that's a bit difficult. So one of the challenges with overcoming that was integrating all of that information from 12 different directories into our own framework and adding MFA over that and delivering that as a unified solution so that the end user at home doesn't actually need to worry about which one of those directories are actually a part of. Uh, that was pretty challenging. The large organization with 12 separate directories by design. Right. Any questions to us? I actually do have, I actually do have a couple of questions that I jotted down here. So in terms of, um, of, of remote access SASE, you know, where do you see, where do you guys see it going in two to three years? You doing you're talking now with vendors. Where do you guys see it going? Uh, yeah, it's a as you say, it's a very good question. From our discussion and from where we see the market, more and more companies moving their infrastructure to I uh, to infrastructure as a service and SaaS. Right. So slowly, slowly, you probably going to see more traffic that native. By native, I mean a web traffic, HTTP traffic. You're going to be going to the internet. So we're probably going to be less and less using the private cloud, the data centers, it's not going to go away, but it will transition more to such applications. And I think native security will be more default. I mean, I will just inspect HTTP, HTTPS, and see what's happening. Also, because in a lot of the cases, the traffic is encrypted, I may will have to inspect traffic over API or right. on the endpoint. And in terms of SASE and WAN Edge, do you see those two bleeding together? Because we see them kind of bleeding together. You, know? you mean SD WAN or? Yeah, SD WAN, WAN Edge, whatever you want to refer to it as. ZTNA and, and outbound browsing, I think it will have to merge together mm -hmm. because if I'm going to the internet, then it's become almost the same. I'm, I want to actually ask you back do you think that people will request small SD WAN hardware for their home usage? And what's the benefit for this? 
we're already seeing that. So I think that um, we just finished a really great project with one of the major banks here, which was part of COVID. Uh, you know, so so there was we were part of this digital transformation project at one of the banks, which was really fascinating. And then what happened is they said, okay, COVID started. So they they, they said, okay, here's a few hundred people that need that need really really strong and secure remote access from home. And 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 what they said is, okay, you know, it's obviously the CEO, CFO. But, you know, the whole middle tier of VPs, the whole all the senior VPs. And what happened is it turned it, it morphed into uh, now we need a device, we need a switch and we need secure APs. So it morphed into a whole secure branch type of proposition because they said, OK, well, we're not going to have the bank's traffic. We're not going to have the trading floor traffic sharing the Wi-Fi with oh. the kids, the kids doing Netflix. So now we have we basically have deployed a firewall, a switch potentially three or four APs, depending on how large the house is. Okay, so we've developed a full remote stack, pushed it out to the leadership of this bank. And they love it because now they have a, that, that user is connected to our AP, to our switch, to our FortiGate that's doing SD-WAN managed by the bank uh, data center operations people downtown. So that's where I'm thinking things are going. I don't know if the client's going to be enough. I don't know. I think it's going to be bigger. I think that if the remote from if the work from home phenomenon continues, if we don't come out of this COVID um, kind of situation in a hurry, then I think we're actually going to be deploying what I would like to call, you know, SD WAN slash mini branches to customers because our customers are saying, I don't want the CFO connecting to the Rogers access point. I don't want, and I want the CFO to have fast access. So the problem becomes if you have a gigabit connection as they do in Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver you know, client might not suffice. We might have to put something really fast inside the person's home. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing interesting things. I'm seeing the food delivery companies. I'm seeing a full stack. Uh, so I'm seeing mobile SD-WAN in the food delivery trucks, right? So full, complete, complete SD-WAN device, complete uh, LTE modem switch and access points mounted inside the truck because the driver needs communication in real time, right? So... Yeah, so so it's 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 really fascinating because it's it's almost taking on a life of its own. Where I almost see the network, uh, you know, whether you want to call it SD WAN or WAN Edge or SASE, uh, I actually see the entire network in a miniature form factor moving out in some cases to to the to location. Now, obviously, depending on the on the complexity of your work, depending on how intensive your work is, and depending on what your security profiles with that company, you know, what is your role, you know, how secure do you need to be. Uh, it's obviously changing the level of the footprint, but um, we actually had another bank come to us recently and say, I don't, uh, you know, my, my users, so my senior vice presidents, my, my middle vice presidents, if, if you can call them that, are actually over Teams or over Zoom, whatever they're using, are actually talking about, about uh, topics or projects that could actually move the stock price. So we actually have a regulatory requirement to make sure that we are managing end-to-end -end that device. Okay, so if they're at home, um, we need to separate them out. So you need to put an SD-WAN device there. You need to put a SASE client. You need to put EDR. You need to put all those pieces on because they're talking about topics that could potentially sway the stock price. So it's just really good, an interesting time to be in the business because um, I think digital transformation was real. And I, but I think that uh, this, the COVID uh, pandemic has really put the foot on the gas in terms of what people are doing and how they're doing it. And it, it's just it's quite fascinating, to be honest. To conclude, if we cannot go to the office, the office is going to come to us. 100%. The office is already <laughs> on the way there. <laughs> okay, we're we're going to quote you when we're going to publish the episode. I like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Rafi, absolutely. thank you very much. It was thank our you pleasure. Guys. Thank you. My pleasure. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and join us for our next episode.